How's it guys? Welcome to Reptile Garden. Um, this latest video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering heating, especially for ambient air temperatures and 24 hour basking. Okay, we're not going to cover some of the other lighting, we'll probably do that in other videos. So for this video, it's going to be heat sources for 24 hour heating, what are used, the pros and the cons, and we've got three different um, units that we're going to be covering here. So each setup is set up exactly the same. Okay, we have got an infrared light in this unit over here, a ceramic heat emitter on this one, and a heat projector over here. Okay, as you can see, there's a little temperature humidity reader over here. They all rigged up the exact same. And when I did check, our temperatures are almost identical, and the humidity is very, very close. We put the same substrate, which has got the same amount of humidity in. Cages are exactly the same size and we're gonna put a 50 watt in each one of these. So the goal of this video at the end is we're gonna see what works the best for what, the pros and the cons. Um, and it's gonna be quite an interesting test. I haven't tested anything like this before, so this is a first for me as well, but I have a pretty good idea of how things are gonna pan out here. I've obviously done a bit of my own research over the years, and a lot of this has come from sort of first-hand use of these things. So. We're going to turn everything on at the exact same time and then we're going to have a little look see at what uh, temperatures and things we've got and we're going to see if one's going to be drying the air more than the other, is the one going to get hotter than the other, so then you know if these are all 50 watts but if this one is getting hotter then we know that is a great energy source for um, using in bigger in vivariums and so on. So yeah, this is going to be quite interesting. Before we turn it on, let's just have a look and see what we've got here in the front. 74, 74, 75, that's on the humidity. 21.6, 21.7, 21.8, very, very close. And then we've got our uh, one down here, which is just the ambient temperatures in the rooms, 22 and 52% humidity. So the humidity of the soil is giving humidity in the box. We're going to turn everything on now and we're going to see how things go here. Okay. Okay, so they're all on. Now, I would suspect that the infrared is going to give heat a lot faster because it is pretty much instant heat. Where your ceramic heat emitter is going to take quite a while to actually warm up, and then the same thing with the heat projector. Yeah, so we're going to let these run for a bit. I don't think we're going to see dramatic changes anytime soon. This one, temperature is starting to come up. It's already 21.9. That's still 21.7. All right, so we're going to give this some time, and then we're going to see what exactly is going to happen here. But uh, what we can do in the meantime is we can have a look at some of the devices and talk a bit about them. So this here is the ceramic fitting it's the e27 so most of your screen bulbs even your uvbs in the reptile industry will use the e27 fitting okay we've got this infrared light here now this is a phillips brand really really large infrared it's a 250 watt so i mean infrareds you get all the way from you know anywhere from 25 watt you know 50 60 75 depending on the brand um, some of them that have much darker lens than others, so the darker the lens the better. We'll go through um, why that is. Okay, and then this here is a ceramic heat emitter. Okay, so you can see it's a pure ceramic, gives off no light whatsoever, but it gets extremely hot. So you have to protect your reptiles from actually touching on this. They uh, get to about 350, 400 degrees at times. The highest wattage we get in South Africa is 150 watts, but they do make 250 watt as well. And then we get them as small as these, this little unit over here, which is 25 watts. I'm loving these little things. I imported uh, quite a lot of these. I'm using them on smaller enclosures like my exoterras and some of my cages, which are 45 centimeters high. And I put a little cage around it to protect the animal from them. Really, really cool. Work like a bomb. Okay, and then just to see the different applications here. Look at our black mamba enclosure. We've got a 250 watt light. 
What I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about actually getting rid of the infrareds where I can. But the problem with the large space enclosure like this, your infrared is one of your better heaters. They're going to throw that heat out quite far and they're very, very quick to heat up. I've got this one on a dimmer stat so it controls it just right. And we can see our black mamba basking here quite nicely. Alrighty, then here we've got our green mambas. Yeah, this girl, she always sits with her mouth open. She's got a problem with her nasal passages, so don't uh, worry about her mouth open there. She's been on every type of antibiotic we can find. Um, she just breathes through her um, trachea of her mouth when she sleeps. She sleeps with her mouth open. All right, we have got a heat emitter in this unit, okay? And I think that's also a 150 because we've got a lot of space and it's also on a thermostat. Great thing about heat emitters is you can put them on just a normal thermostat on off on off it can go crazy they never die and it doesn't really matter what heat emitter you get what brand it is they're pretty much all the same you might just find that the output is better on one to the next all right here you can see our other green mamba so they're doing very well unfortunately there's a little basking light over here the little halogen um it's a little 50 watt that's popped so i'm gonna have to get in and replace that one and then we've got our Boomslang here. We've got the different setup with them. They're actually busy mating. You can see the males are jittery all over the place and things are going on down there at the back. But anyways, we're not covering that right now in this video. We've got the heat projector in this unit. And they're basking light there. And they're on a dimmer stat. So when they get heating from this small little 50 watt, which is not going to be too much to heat the whole place, the heat projector doesn't have to work as hard then during the at night the basking spot will go off and the heat projector will kick in to take the nighttime temperature so we have a day nighttime temperature drop alrighty um, don't think we covered the heat projector yet here's our heat projector you can see on the inside it's got like a ceramic coil and it's wrapped with a filament and it's got a lot of mirroring to create that and reflect that heat down into the enclosure. All right, we definitely cover more about the lighting and everything. We're gonna have a look, see what our cages are doing here. Okay, so we're just at 25 degrees and the humidity has come down quite a lot already on the infrared. It's at 62 now. Humidity is still perfect on the heat emitter. But the temperature is climbing extremely slowly your heat emitters are going to create more of a hot pocket which is nice in a tall enclosure like this because your animal can come bask up here and then it can move down to thermoregulate in that sense okay you, even if you put this unit in the very top back corner or you have more space and they can heat up in the corner also staying at the top but they can go down to cool down all right and then the humidity is doing climbing a little bit in the projector just by one percent so i wouldn't say that's anything significant and the temperature also very very slowly climbing so you can see so far the heat emitter i mean sorry the infrared light is working a lot better at getting the heat quick and direct and the other two are still going to have to warm up i'm going to see what they are going to do but obviously we're going to leave this running for about 24 hours we'll check the temperatures then and then we'll really know um, which one's the better sort of heat source in that sense. Yeah, so those you can see are sort of applications. The infrared lights are great, especially the high wattage ones. You can connect them on a normal thermostat. And they can go on and off, but obviously they do give off light. So that can disturb the animal slightly when it's on, off, on, off all the time. Snakes not having eyelids, they can't blink or close the eyes. So they can potentially see this light. So it works very nicely for our large constrictors. A great way to heat the heavy bodies and the environment. But as I suspect, it's going to dry out the air quite a lot. So we keep having to sort of top up the humidity out of the foggers or misting the substrate but we've got uh, bioactive substrate in most of our enclosures which helps the humidity in the enclosures anyway 
So we are now approaching about an hour on this uh, little test there and you can see the infrared is the humidity is 28 I mean it dropped pretty quickly temperature is 27.5 and it even looks like the peat's kind of drying out on the surface a little bit but I think they all could be a bit then this one's the heat emitter we're sitting with a humidity of 64 so it hasn't dropped as much but it is busy dropping and temperature of 26.8 and then the heat projector is 64, it's just gone down another degree, and temperature of 26.2. Okay, so that's just at about an hour marker. We're gonna see what happens when we leave it on longer. I'd just like to explain my sort of views on each of these um, units. I mean, I've obviously covered a little bit as we've gone around, um, but yeah, let's get a little bit more into it. Um, after the whole test is done maybe I would have changed my mind but I'm pretty sure um, what the outcome may be here I might have the odd surprise here and there on electricity saving for heat but otherwise I don't think anything's gonna surprise me there too much now the thing with the infrareds they've been used for many many years a lot of people will tell you this is the way to go for 24-hour heating the red light does not disturb the reptiles um, because they don't have the ability to see red okay now they might not be able to see the red but these possibly still give off light which they can see and we're gonna go do a little test now quickly I'm just gonna cut it into the video right here um, just to have a look see at how this test happens so let's go have a look okay so we're looking at the gargoyles eye now you can see the pupils quite wide it's almost fully dilated obviously in pitch darkness it'll fully dilate to let the light in so we're going to bring it close to the infrared light and see what happens okay you can see how it's narrowing a lot okay so these guys they definitely can see the light that is coming from these infrareds you can see how narrow it is now and it's not even looking directly at the light see look how thin that is it's almost almost as if i was in fairly bright light they do go a lot thinner these slits than the eyes if the lights are very bright but i mean this is bright enough for this animal to feel this is daytime okay we're going out into the dark you can see how it's widening and obviously it's very difficult to film in this kind of light but you can see how wide it is now okay so I think this is a very good test as to how geckos and well, nocturnal species are able to see the light coming from these infrareds. Now that light that I was testing, same type of light as in here, it's a very very good brand of infrared. I'm not going to mention where it comes from, but it's one of the darker lenses of a very very well known brand. And some other brands can have even lighter lenses, so the, the possibility of the light is even more intense. Now, I used to keep an emerald tree boa and uh, gargoyle geckos with a little infrared, just like a low wattage so they can get a nice basking spot, um, many, many years ago. And I found that they were never active. I'd go in at night, and you want to view them with this red light so you can see what's going on in the enclosure. Nothing. The, the snake was just sitting there dead still, the gargoyle geckos weren't moving around, they were barely eating their food. And I thought, no, there, there's something odd here, let me just try and change things up. And what I actually ended up doing was I put in a heat emitter. And put in the heat emitter, came into the room 15 minutes later, snake was stretched out, exploring the enclosure, gecko was running about, it was like total total different changeover in behavior and ever since that day i've tried to get away from the infrareds as much as i can this is pretty much old technology um, but as you can see i do use them in my enclosures for large enclosures we struggle to heat quite a bit we can't heat the whole environment here it's uh, quite a large space so those infrareds have been working very well for us and as i say 
for large heavy bodied voids, your boas and your pythons. Now, a great thing about infrared heat lamps, okay, is that they do give quite a good penetration of heat getting through the dermis, through the layers of skin. And that's why you see a lot of the time you get heat treatment and heat therapy to help healing and wounds. It creates better blood flow. It um, helps with all these things to benefit the blood flow and condition of the area that is being warmed and it can help in that sense. So that is a great thing about infrared is that it does penetrate somewhat into the dermis, the skin and the tissue of the animals. But with the light that they give off, I'm really, I'm trying to work away from these entirely if I can. So a lot of my enclosures which are small enough, I just go with the heat emitters which are fantastic. Um, we're going to talk about the heat emitters as well. Now the other th problem that you do find with your infrared lights, you get many different wattages. But again, it's always important to have something on a thermostat. That way you can control the heat. Okay, in a situation like this, we're burning these 50 watts, we get in a certain temperature range, it's getting a little bit higher than what uh, the room temperature is, especially because we're monitoring it low down. Underneath the light, we're gonna get much higher temperatures. So if my animal was basking up here, I would have a little probe to control the infrared light. Problem comes in if you use a normal on-off thermostat with the low wattages of the infrared lights, they often pop. And even people who leave them on permanently in enclosures where they've got quite a bit of space, the animal can move away, they end up popping quite often. So that is a bit of a downside. You end up spending quite a bit of money, especially on the lower wattages of the infrared lights. But again, for me, the main thing is affecting the animal's day-night cycles. I mean, a truly nocturnal species is active in some of the darkest nights even when the moon is out full, a lot of species don't come out because they still feel they're exposed, they're quite lit from the moonlight, predation can happen, all these kinds of things we need to take into consideration when we are keeping animals in these enclosures and so on. Okay, so I'm really trying to move away from these as far as I can. I'm going to look at other options, I'm maybe even importing other heat emitters or projectors, maybe giving a shot um, with a heat emitter in here and a nice um, basking day spot. So I can put in a, rather than have the infrared in there, I can put in a nice um, basking daylight and then at night time it's going to switch over to a drop in temperature where the heat emitter or heat projector is going to kick in to maintain the temperature for this animal. Black mum is pretty hardy. Um, so it's not like some of your boas and that you've got to really watch your temperatures and your humidity to make sure it's really really good okay now let's go on to the heat emitters okay heat emitters are fantastic source of heat especially for warming up the ambient air temperature now you can put a heat pad in your enclosure and this time now in winters about things are getting a lot cooler a heating pad does not help to warm the air. Okay, we're looking at tropical species. We want something that's going to warm the environmental air quite a bit, as well as a basking spot for that animal. So whether you're giving it a belly heat, you still need to raise that ambient air temperature. So heat, ceramic heat emitters are fantastic for that. And as I've mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter what brand you get, they all work the same. I've even had one that broke, I dropped it, it cracked in half, it was hanging by the wires and it was still working. That's how good these things are. They, they say that they last for about 30,000 hours. I have got a heat emitter still in an enclosure now to this day that is going on about 11 years. Okay, So it's quite amazing, they're really good. You might have to spend some money on the higher end brands but they last for ages and also a nice thing is you can use a normal thermostat with them okay on off on off doesn't matter they don't pop too easily so with the infrared on off on off is going to pop them so the lower wattage ones you would want to use something like a dimmer stat which slowly decreases or increases the power output to get your temperature spot on and that way it doesn't blow the filament 
Yeah, the filament on these low wattage is a very, very thin little wire, so that energy surging through it can pop it. Now, here in South Africa, our energy is up, down, on, off, who knows what nowadays. And a sudden surge, you can blow these lights quite easily as well. The higher wattages, the 250 watt and the 175 watt, we don't really get the reptile brands of them. You get about 150 watt, which are also not too strong, but they will be stronger. So the ones I've got here are used in pig farms and, chick and chicken breeding places. The filaments are a lot thicker, they're much hardier. Okay, you don't ever want to touch the ceramic heat emitter, they get extremely hot. I mean, this one's just been on for about an hour, okay, and we're not talking about the heat emitter itself, we may be check its temperature later, but just the ceramic here is at 70, 76 degrees, whereas the infrared, at 61, it's probably still going to maybe climb, project to 74, also getting pretty hot. Okay, the surface of these things are extremely, extremely hot. Now, the one thing about the ceramic heat emitter, it creates a really nice hot pocket. It doesn't throw the heat down as far as the infrared does, or maybe the heat projector does. So creating a nice little warm pocket. So it's just perfect for a lot of keeping of um, your, um, your arboreal species, sorry. So you'll get your crested geckos, gargoyle geckos. I give them a little basking spot, maybe with the, the little mini heat emitter. Okay, they do very fine with room temperatures, but when it gets cold in winter, my geckos love basking. And I've got my Lichianus geckos as well recently. They are permanently basking underneath their little heat emitter. So they're really good for your arboreal species. They can come up, get into that nice warm pocket, and then move down if they want to cool down. Okay, whereas a light like this is throwing heat almost all the way through, there's not too much variation. It's drying out the air as well. I have read and people have told me that the ceramic heat emitters dry out the air a lot. I don't think they dry out the air anywhere near as much as an infrared does. But that's also why we're doing this test. That's maybe a point I'm going to learn. Okay, so heat emitters, they are definitely the way to go. Only problem is they don't project too much um, into the tissue okay so they heat a lot of the surface and things like that so your infrared remember nice muscle penetration and heat emitters not so much now we're going on to the heat projector I've recently been using them a while the first ones I was introduced to is the heat projector here the first ones I was introduced to was the Mega Ray. Now, Mega Ray is um, quite well known in the States, I think it is, for their reptile lighting, their UVBs, um, very good. And I got a couple of their heat projectors. I decided, let me test these out, plugged one in, and almost immediately, you can just feel the heat pulsing out of it. and it really penetrates very well into the skin as well so i think this is this is really the way to go as i said we are doing our test so from what research i've done and from using these in a lot of my enclosures the heat projector is the way of the future definitely um, this is the nomoi pet um, brand so it's a little ceramic which we did cover that's got a filament around it and we'll show you later in this video once we've done our test you'll actually see it glows almost red hot you'll see this orange glow inside of there it gets like red hot and that heat just comes out of it really nicely so that nice reflective inside projects that heat well and apparently the heat projectors are giving off ira and irb that is exactly what you want when it comes to reptiles so we can see how things are coming along and developing with everything in the world. You know, we started off here with the infrareds. Then we came out with the ceramic heat emitters. And now we've got new technology with the projectors. Uh, there's also Arcadia, I think it is, that do a heat projector. I don't know if we have in the country, in South Africa at the moment. I've seen them. They look awesome. So... 
that's definitely something I'm going to try and hop onto is getting more animals onto the heat projectors. I recently put a neotropical rattlesnake on it and he's loving it. He didn't have an infrared or anything, he just had a heat pad. He's quite a bulletproof of an animal. We don't get too cooler temperatures in the reptile park here, especially behind the scenes. We are now in the open area of the park, which gets quite cold. Uh, but behind the scenes, we've got a lot of animals. We've got a lot of heating and we've got air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. And it filters into the enclosures and we have computer fans to change the airflow and everything. So that's another reason the animal's quite happy. But since putting in that heat projector, he's basking a lot more and he's quite a lot more active. He was cruising around just now. So we'll maybe go and take a look at him and how I've set up um, his heat projector there. So great thing about the heat projector, again, you can put it on a thermostat but I have had one or two blow, so I prefer to put them on a dimmerstat. So remember again, dimmerstat's controlling, it's a proportional thermostat where it gives power, gets it to the temperature, and then it just stops it right there. It doesn't turn off, okay? Always the on, off, on, off, that's a lot of wear and tear, things pop and go downhill. All right, so I think that covers everything. You know, guys, please excuse me if my video is a little bit here, there, and everywhere. I don't like sitting editing stuff for days on the end. I don't have the time. So I just give the information I have on hand. I come out, I try and get the video done, and I think it covers quite a lot of stuff. So we'll see after this test where we're at. We'll have a quick look and see what's happening in the front. Okay, so humidity here on the infrared is going down to 56. It just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. Same with the other two, but nowhere near as fast. So we've got 62 humidity here, temperature 27 on the ceramic heat emitter, 27 as well on the infrared. So ceramic heat emitter is now caught up. We are probably on the hour mark or just over. So it's caught up to the infrared. So we see the infrared's immediate heat. It's like straight off the bat, boom, there it is. Um, heat emitter takes a while, but it's getting there now. And then the heat projector is 20, 26.5. So it's a little bit behind the heat emitter, which is quite interesting. I thought it would um, be a, a little faster than the heat emitter. So it's quite interesting we're learning, but we're going to see at the end of the day what's happening. Maybe it takes a little bit longer to start working. But yeah, so far so good. And then because our ambient is 50. We always have about 50 to 60% um, percent humidity in our reptile park. I think we're just lucky that in that sense because that's a pretty good humidity range to be in. Uh, we are right next to indoor plants in a nursery. So there's quite a bit of humidity going around. We've also got our big pits here with our monitor lizards. We've got bioactive substrate in there. So there's constantly... Quite a bit of humidity in the air. Uh, temperature is 22.6 at the moment out here. Here's a look at my neotropical rattlesnake, Crotalus simus. Excuse the glass is a bit dirty, but we're not getting any customers anymore with the whole lockdown, so it doesn't really matter what the glass looks like. But I see he's messing up his plants a little bit. So he's a lot more active. He is a monster. And you can see here, we've got the heat projector and we've got a protective cage around it. Okay, so you always want to have a protective cage around something that gets extremely hot. Now, you guys might be able to see how I've mounted it. There's the E27 fitting. And you can see it's not touching against the wood. Now, the reason I do that is so that it doesn't start burning the wood because these ceramic fittings get extremely hot, as I say. And you can actually find that it starts to get a bit charred or brown. Um, so I use quite long screws, make sure it's really fastened in the wood properly, and then I have that air space. And that way you don't get any possibility of a dark charring or anything like that. Okay, so that's just a quick look at how we've set this up. This was a recent change. And this boyki is really happy in here. So guys, I decided to do one last test. You can see I added these green water bowls. So I put water in them and there's a pr temperature probe inside of that. 
to see if the temperature is different rather than just measuring air temperature. We left it on all day. We've got our ambient humidity of 66 with a temperature of 24.5. Okay, when it comes to the heat emitter, oh sorry, infrared light, we're looking at 49% humidity, so it's a bit drier than the others. So we've got 51 here and 53 there, but I mean, that's not much. It's like four degrees main difference. Temperature wise, we've got 30.3 on the infrared light. So this does seem to do heating a bit better. We've got 29.5 on the heat emitter and 29.3 on the heat projector. Remember all 50 watts, so they pretty much close to one another. I wouldn't say that the heat projector is more powerful than the emitter but it is a different type of heat and more penetrate and so on but let's have a look at the temperature of the water bowls we've got 27.8 on the infrared 27.8 on the heat emitter and 27.2 so there is not too much of a difference when we're talking about the heat that's being delivered here but definitely the main issue that I find is the infrared light can disturb the animals. In conclusion of this video, we're just going to do a quick recap of the pros and cons of these units. Uh, sorry if I'm repeating myself on a few things. I just want to make sure that I cover everything. And also sometimes we can miss something, so sometimes it's best to have it drilled into us. Now again, this is just my opinion on each of these. I have done my research. I've got about 20 years of keeping reptiles. I've been using the infrareds, but I've kind of tried to get away from those as much as I can, especially the lower wattages, and I've gone more towards the heat emitters, and now I'm really trying to get more of the heat projectors. They were pretty expensive, but there are cheaper units that are coming out nowadays, so I really want to try and get on those. But just to cover a little recap quickly, with the infrared lights, we saw that the pupil of that gecko was dilated and then under the light, it closes up which shows that they can see the light they might not have the cones in the eyes to actually see red light but they can still pick up the light that's being emitted from these now if you have this connected to a thermostat and it's going on off on off just imagine you had no eyelids and you're lying in your bedroom trying to sleep and someone was sitting there turning the lights on and off on and off it's a form of torture, I would say. So this is why we really got to think about what we're doing here with these infrared lights. Okay, These animals can see it. It can bother them. Some animals are going to get over it. They're going to you know, find a nice dark place to hide in the hide or whatever. And they can manage around it. Other animals are going to stress. Each animal is different. If they've got eyelids, they'll close their eyes, maybe find a dark little corner to sleep. Others might get quite irritated by it, still seeing a bit of light coming through your eyelids. It can bother you. As I say, some will get used to this, others might not. So this is the problem with these lights. Plus, they pop often, especially the lower wattages, the higher wattages will last much longer. So it becomes expensive. And the pet shops love selling these. These are good money makers, because you're always going to come back to get another one when it pops. So... We do stock them, but we'll always have the option there for people who want, but we will try and convert them onto these other heating. Okay, your heat emitter. Really great units, warming up the air, IRC. Okay, it's convection, heat coming off of something, warming the air. They last forever, they don't pop. You can put them on any thermostat, dimmestat, doesn't matter. They do the job really well. But again, it's not muscle penetrating, it's just warming the environment. But these can be really, really nice. I've been using these for many, many years, and I'm very happy with them. Bred tons of reptiles using heat emitters. They give off no light whatsoever, so they're really great. Then we're going on to the new technology, the heat projector. I really wanted to show you guys what the coil looks like in the dark, but I couldn't pick it up with my camera. But it glows like a red-orange and it 
might give off a little bit of light, but nothing that's going to really disturb the reptile. So just because of that element glowing, it might give a slight little glow of light that maybe will help you view an animal, but not too much. So it's not going to disturb the animal. Remember, it's giving you infrared A and infrared B, like you would get in the sun. If you go out into the sun on a nice warm day, you feel how that sun penetrates the skin. The air can be cold, but you feel that penetration of warmth, that tingly feeling. That is your infrared A and infrared B. All right. When the rocks and the sand and soil, everything around gets very warm in the day, and you find that the air is starting to get hot. So say you would have to go to like a, the desert or the Peru or somewhere where it's really hot in summer, and the air is even hot and it's like heavy to breathe. Okay, that is your UV, uh, keep saying UV, <laughs> that is your IRC, infrared C. Alright, the sun, when it comes to earth, most of the infrared C is reflected back into the atmosphere, whereas all the rocks and that, that's heating up, the convection, that is warming the air and creating the UVC. So with your, with your heat projectors, you're getting the muscle penetration, the heating of the rocks and the branches and the soil around it and then you're getting the heat rising up warming the air in the enclosure this is a three-in-one this is the way to go this is the future of light of heating especially 24 hour heating so really great you can use this instead of basking lights as long as you've got say your UVB if an animal requires that so it's got the visual light the UVB UVA and then it's got that muscle penetrating heat. You're gonna get a much happier, healthier animal. So guys, we must always remember, we must think about our animals, try and make things as best as we can for them, try and stimulate their minds, you know, with some sort of enrichment, making the enclosures look prettier, giving them space so they can do what they need to, not having them in a little box. I know that there's uh, all the racking systems and everything, and they have their place, but that's another thing that I'm trying to steer away from. You see the natural behavior of an animal in a beautiful cage with bioactive substrate is just something totally different. I'd rather have one enclosure than 10 rack tubs in one spot. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you can take away some of these um, facts that I've mentioned and make up your own minds. Do the research, really look into it. If you did find it useful, please give us a like so we know what we're doing here is good and we will have further content coming out so please subscribe